Hi! Welcome to today's paleontology lesson and welcome to another video. So, judging from the way that I've been talking about paleontology on my channel and the fact that I have the channel in and of itself, it's pretty obvious that I'm quite passionate and interested in the subject of paleontology. Therefore, it may not be a surprise to some of you that since I'm still a student, I decided to seek out some opportunities that can help me further discover and further, you know, dig in deeper about that interest during the summer, like summer programs. And now, um, during the summer of my sophomore year, I went to this amazing summer program called Stones and Bones, held by the University of Chicago in coalition with the Field Museum, and I had a stunning, amazing time. I met such an amazing group of people, professors and teachers, and I learned so much, and I had such a great field experience. And in this period of time, um, especially this time of year when people are starting to look into uh, certain summer programs or looking into summer programs they want, may want to engage in for the following year, I decided to make this video so that more people can learn about you know these amazing um, summer program opportunities relating to paleontology so they can also further um, dig in deeper about their interests in paleontology as well so um, the following video is going to be a video of a presentation that I gave about stones and bones um, at my school in a paleontology class at my school now the presentation is quite a long one so I'm gonna divide it into two different parts so now please enjoy the first part of the video. Can you share that with all of you? So first of all, just to give you guys a little bit of background, as Dr. Farkey said, as a sophomore I joined the paleontology program and by the end of sophomore year I found myself to be really intrigued by paleontology as a field in general and that means like more than just field work, that's also like research and like fossil preparation, logistics around it, so I just found myself to be really interested and I really wanted to find an experience that would help me dig in deeper into the field about paleontology. So obviously the web summer pecker trip is a great experience that all of you should opt in for but I was a little bit more greedier. You see, I really wanted an experience that can help me get the classic college experience and really explore some colleges that I really like, as well as getting that paleontology aspect in the program. And that desire brought me to um, Stones and Bones at the University of Chicago and the Field Museum, a small town in Wyoming called Hemmer, and then finally at the FBI. So this is just sort of an outline of what I'm going to be talking about today. So I'll first go into some introductions about what Stones and Bones is, and then talk about some of the background information, some of my experiences in the field, what we found, how we prepared those things that we found, and then finally just the conclusion of what I want this talk to land on. So first of all, Stones and Bones is a four-week paleontology program at the University of Chicago that's held in coalition with the Field Museum. Um, and in the middle of those four weeks, we actually go out to Wyoming into the Green River Formation for some pecker experience. Um, there I really met a group of wonderful, wonderful people who are all really passionate about either paleontology or just like other aspects of like, you know, the science in general, like biology or mineralogy or geography, like all of these different things that uh, like amalgamated together into this experience and all these different people that made this experience the unique thing that it was. I also met a lot of very cool teachers and professors who are just really cool. So if you guys are interested in this, you can come ask me more questions after. So in the middle of two weeks, as I said, we went out to Wyoming um, for the field work and um, during those two weeks, we normally woke up and then started working at about 9 a.m. in the morning, worked all the way until 12.30 at the site. And then we would go in town for the hottest part of the day and then come back out again um, about 2 p.m. and then finally work until dinner. So that's how, you know, like sort of how the daily schedules of that worked. Um, and we, again, we um, pitched our tents on this very inclined slope and <laughs> we slept there for two weeks. But it does offer a really great view as, you know, the second photo that I took shows. Um, it's like a really pretty valley and has rivers and when you sleep at night on that inclined slope trying to not slide down a hill, you can actually hear the river. So that's a really cool experience in and of itself. Before I get on more about that, you're probably wondering what the heck is FBM because I've been talking about it as if all you guys should know. Um, so it's actually a dig site. I'm going to be talking a little bit about like the fossils, the age of it, and just other general information. 
So FBM stands for the Fossil King Pepper, and it's a part of a larger lake system that existed 52 million years ago in the Eocene Epoch, which is, again, <laughs> a part of a larger river slash lake system called the Green River Lake System, or as we now know it as the Green River Formation. Um, at its peak, it supported three independent lakes, um, Lake Unida, Lake Gossu, and Fossil Lake. So the earliest appearance of this lake system was because of the formation of a basin, so as a result of the mountains lifting around it. As a result, the basin like, collected quite an amount of runoff, and this lake system really prospered because of it. And one of the most like, amazing things about this lake system is that it actually has one of the longest durations of existence of any known lake systems on Earth. Um, for example, the Green River Lake System existed from the early Paleocene to the late Eocene, which is like early Cenozoic. So it basically existed for about 20 million years. The Great Lake System that we have today existed for about 10,000. So that's just to give you like a scale of how long the system really lasted. So Fossil Lake, one of the three lakes that the Green River Lake System supported, is really the star of this excavation um, because the FBM or the Fossil Butte member is a member within that lake. So this lake is divided into three different phases or members, um, divided into the Angel member, the Fossil Butte member, and then finally the Road Hollow member. So the Fossil Butte member is the most productive period of this lake. Um, like in which I got to work with uh, during the summer program, which was really cool, but I'll get to that later. Um, the FBM really holds like a copious amount of diverse fossils. It holds fossils ranging from like bacteria, arthropods, plants, um, mammals, birds, wraith and fishes, of course, and just so many other cool things. I won't bother you with like the whole list, but I will talk about some discoveries that we found during our trip. So before I go any further about my experiences in the program, I think um, just through that introduction, I don't think I need to emphasize on how much like the wet peccary experience and their like impacts on me because I really feel like it built like sort of my love for paleontology and it motivated me to go to this program, to search for programs, to further, you know, dig in deeper about this field. Mm -hmm. So this talk isn't really about like which one's better, like, oh, you should totally pick stones and bones over the summer peccary trips. No. It's really about what you want um, as a summer experience. So I wanted something that's college of paleontology, but if you want something that's more akin to the summer peccary trip experience at Web, that is also a great opportunity as well. And that concludes the first part of my speech about this amazing summer program called Stones and Bones. What did you think about the program? Have you engaged in some kind of fun summer paleontology program that you know you want to share with everyone as well? Please leave something in the comments below and see you next time.